for uh, immediate action during this transition. Okay. Uh, di ko marinig. Hi, Dr. Mike. Yes. So, um, so our second, uh, the next question that we'll be asking is from Greg Gregorio of TV5. He's asking, how hmm. would the new normal look like if the WHO says the virus might never go away and it will be endemic like HIV? Ang inaasahan natin dito is it will not go away. Actually, alam mo, yung, yung mga SARS and all of those, they never went away. Eh. Um, babalik at babalik yan. Pero ang, ang, what we're hopeful for is that it will not be as, as lethal. No? Na, na, uh, we're, at saka medyo race against time, we hope that there will be a vaccine. Pero alam mo, ibang, isang issue din. Kahit may bakuna na, will we be able to afford it? No? Kasi uunahan ang mga mayayaman na bansa no, before they will get to us uh, poorer countries. No? And so, so that's going to be another problem. We will always have to be prepared here. No? We, will, <coughs> we, will have to have, uh, we will have to continue many of these measures. We will need the guidance of WHO and the DOH na um, hanggang kailan nga yung mga mask and 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 mass and physical distancing and all that actually baka maging part na yan ng kultura natin it will become part of our culture na automatic may distansya magdi-distansya tayo sa mga tao na lalo pa kung hindi natin kilala so that will be a major challenge certainly our next question is from Carolyn Bonkin from CNN Philippines Carolyn mm -hmm. do you want to ask your questions Sir, my I have two questions. Sir, my first wet. question is yes, pa oh. mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Uh, some, the wet. Um, oh, I'm, ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, some LGUs are arresting uh, curfew and quarantine protocol violators. Is this mm -hmm. the best to, to discipline people? Given na magtatagal pa po ito, um, what do no. you think is the best way para po mas yeah. kung na kusumunod sila ng kusa and mm -hmm. hindi kamay na baka yes. kumbaga yung gagamitin. Yeah. I agree totally with you. No, yung ano, um, ano eh, from psychology, it's very, very clear. No? At alam din natin, mga magulang sa atin, na ano eh, pag sigaw ng sigaw, naging and all this, nagiging disensitize ang mga tao eh. No? So sinasabi nating pasaway, actually, manhid na ang mga tao uh, at hahanap sila ng ibang paraan and where dito pumapasok ng pasaway. Ang pasaway natin minsan ay resistance eh, kasi nagagalit na ang mga tao. No? Uh, lalo pa sa barangay level kasi narinig ko na mga kapwa natin ano, dito sa community, kapwa mga may hirap, hindi ba nila naiintindihan ang, ang sitwasyon natin? No? I have heard stories na uh, inaaresto Inaresto, dinala sa, sa barangay center, di ba, pinaupo sila sa ano, may physical distancing nga kasi uh, may physical distancing pero walang pagkain kasi daw baka mag-enjoy pa sila. And then on her way out, itong 18 years old, nung narelease siya, inaresto na, na naman siya kasi out of the house siya. No? Can you imagine all these stories? No? Kasi kakalat yan. No? At ang lumalabas, ang tingin nila sa gobyerno, manhid, walang pagmamalasakit nga. And... The feeling there is, kung ganun ang trato ninyo sa akin, huwag mong isipin na magre-respeto din kami sa inyo, kaya nagiging pasaway. No? Yung ginamit mong term is kusa. No? We need to get people to understand kung bakit ginagawa itong mga patakaran natin. No? Ang UP, hawak ko yan ng, ng anim na taon. No? Nung pumasok ko, sabi nila, naku, patay ka, puro mga aktivista, puro mga ano. I said, ay naku. Uh, ang problema is your methods were always confrontational. Yes, friends ko ngayon, ang mga sabi nga nila, pati ako aktivista kasi, no? but there's much more there. No? Kung may laba, naglabag, tinakausap namin, bakit ba anong nangyari dito? May problema ka ba sa bahay? May That's what we should be doing as well. No? So, yung sa curfew, yung nahuli sa labas ng bahay, nabasa ko pa na ano, police record yan. Ha? Can you imagine for such a little infringement? Can you imagine again yung resentment ng tao? No? 
And then nakita nila may police general na nagaano sa birthday cake no yung ang sama ng loob ng mga tao. So uh, talk with psychologists uh, we are ready also in the ako psychologists pero may mga paraan din dito uh, on how we can bridge this uh, itong ano nga natin na puro lagot ka hala ka sige mauhuli ka no hindi na yan pwede no parang parang bata ba yan na ano kukunin ka ng aswang ngayon kukunin ka ng barangay tanod enough of that for now no that's why i said let's let's look for new approaches and you will find no isa pang bagay no i'm sure kung titingnan natin yung uh, covid infection rates you will find that they are lower and that they are lowering in cities and towns na mababait ang mayor no naririnig ko rin yan ano uh, kausap ko kagabi yung isang taga pangasinan no Um, niya, mabait ang mayor namin, wala pa silang kaso because everyone cooperates. Pasig is doing very well kasi ang tingin nila kay mayor, may puso siya para sa kanila. No? Nung nawala ng public transport, nagano siya na mag-tricycle, tapos pinagalitan siya ng national government. No? So, we have to show compassion. That is the way to get to people. Pasok tayo sa wedding. <laughs> Sir, yung so second question ko is, uh, oh. Sir, ang dami nang nag-cancel ng mga wedding plans and uh, kung sinasabi uh, na um, coronavirus might not go away, so how do you mm. think weddings should be held under mm -hmm. the normal? Oo, magninino nga sana ako ngayong Mayo eh, na, na postpone din, no? And uh, I don't know, frankly, I don't know kung kailan nga uh, we will again have to assess the situation kung kailan pwedeng mag-weddings ulit. Uh, at manda tayo, mag-weddings na may physical distancing. <laughs> I'm sure naman ang bride and groom will be able to stay together. No? Pero baka pati yung pari, pati yung mga guests. No? We may have to have small weddings for now. Uh, legally, I don't know kung pwedeng online wedding. <laughs> uh, we should ask our legal experts. And then, Uh, have the bigger wedding later on pag lumipas na itong crisis. No? Uh, naku, medyo mag-aanon din ang mga ibang conservatives natin. I'm afraid for now, baka maraming maglilive in muna no? uh, because they cannot get married. No? And I'm sure God will understand. No? Uh, may I mention also, no? ang, ang grabe din dito sa, sa COVID-19 is the way our many of our cultural institutions are Uh, hinahamon tayo ngayon no? at isang malaking bagay yung sa patay nga. No? And this is where I also ask the DOH to uh, to loosen up their restrictions kasi sa ngayon, within 12 hours, kailangan ilibing o i-cremate. Pero sa totoo lang, pinipilit ng mga ospital na cremation. Ang dami ko nang naririnig na kwento, nakakaawa kasi ang mga kamag-anak, pag when someone has COVID and is dying, bawal na ang contact no so hindi nila nakita tapos namatay ang kamag-anak nga binabawal pa rin na pumasok sa kwarto at ano no and then once na pinasok sa body bag at na zip na yan hindi na pwedeng buksan so uh, they will never see their loved ones again and then diretso na sa cre uh, crematorium ang WHO has different guidelines Ang sabi ng WHO, actually, hindi nakakahawa ang bangkay. No? Kasi hindi na yan umuubo, hindi na yan ano. No? And relatives should be allowed to see the remains. Hindi lang pwedeng humawak, hindi pwedeng magyakapan at ano. No? And kung may burol nga, kailangan maliit lang. Preferably, wala na lang burol. Kasi ang problema sa mga buhay, eh. kung may burol, marami namang tao doon naman maghawaan. So many of our cultural institutions will have to be reviewed. Postponed na rin ang mga ibang living. May mga kaibigan ako na namatay ang loved ones nila. Nag cremation pero ayaw pa nilang ilibing. Sabi nila, we need to have it together with other relatives. Itong, itong medyo ano, no, yung, it is so ang sakit no, when you read of this, uh, when you read about this. No? And I'm urging hospitals and the DOH kailangan maghanap tayo ng paraan. No? Early during the pandemic, nga may mga kaso pa nga namatay na yung kamag-anak, hindi na inform, uh, may namatay, hindi na inform ang kamag-anak. No? You might have heard of that case na nabasa na lang sa dyaryo na PH109 was the latest victim. Sabi nila, si tatay yan, hindi sila in-inform. No? Pero, mas okay na tayo ngayon. No? We are learning. Okay.
Thank you, Doc. Uh, Doc Mike, uh, since it's nearly 10 o'clock, we will field uh, three more questions, questions. Um, from Bons Magsambol, Jared Naval, and uh, Lay Alvis from GMA7. Uh, if I can ask, just ask our media friends to shorten their questions, and then for those time permitting, maybe we can uh, field uh, additional questions. Um, but for I'd those, like take, I'd like to take Gerard Naval's question also, because he's a okay, UA so managing directors. Din ako, no? mm -hmm. Okay, so we can, we can, let's let's answer uh, Jared's, Jared Naval's question. Na po. So he asked, uh, what's leads in other countries such as in the US have already started allowing the resumption of activities? An example is the NBA, which allowed individual player workouts to resume. Is it possible, sir, for local sports leagues to allow similar activities with limited attendance and zero physical contact under the modified GCQ ECQ? And if it's advisable to hold games behind closed doors or without an audience? Oh. Actually, pinag-usapan din yun ng UAAP even before the quarantine. No? Nag, nag, ano, na, kasi nakita din namin sa mga ibang bansa, lalo pa sa Europe, uh, tinuloy nila yung competition pero with no audience, no? na tinelevise na lang para manood nila sa bahay nga. No? Uh, that is a possible model, except ang partner natin ay, ang partner ng UAP ay hindi nagpo-broadcast, no? ABS-CBN nga. Uh, sana naman makabalik sila sa ano. No? But uh, for the other things, sa, sa in the schools, it's going to be a problem na mukhang mahirapan tayo sa sports activities at naghahanap din kami ng mga models and alternatives here, no? Uh, I can tell you na nag-check ako sa mga coaches namin, may mga conditioning exercises na pinapagawa sa mga uh, atleta natin sa bahay. At sana ma-share din yan para din sa mga ibang hindi atleta, marami din magagawa sa bahay. We hope, of course, I, ano yun, napakaling bagay kasi ang sport, sports competitions and maybe the way to go is to have... Uh, the competitions with no audience nga, pero pwedeng panoorin na sa bahay. But we need to keep our athletes in condition. Uh, I'm proud to say also may sports psychologist kami, si, si Dr. Aginto, who is doing a survey of all the different athletes of the different schools. Uh, how are they coping? Can you imagine? Kasi ang daming hindi nakalaro ngayong last season, no? yung football and all these other activities. So, uh, Parang bumuelo lang tayo recently sa sports that people are becoming more sports conscious. We hope that can be maintained uh, even under under these restricted conditions. Thanks. So our uh, second to the last question is from Bons Magsambol of Rappler. Once you want to ask your question, na? Yes. Hello. Hi, Hi Doc. Bons. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, this is Bons Magsambol po from Rappler. So sir, at uh, ano lang, so given that the internet is still a problem to many Filipinos and many schools are shifting online. So how do we make sure na wala pong maiiwan? And then for my follow up po, actually some psychologists have pointed out na uh, in this pandemic po, ma while many people are struggling to survive, maraming namamatay, maraming walang pagkain sa table, should we for now po muna freeze classes as the country deals with the pandemic? Parang yung safety muna natin and survival kasi education can wait naman it can happen anytime and pwede naman siyang mangyari din kasi parang the pandemic itself is an education it's a learning for yes. all of us so parang what's your opinion po on this actually several UP professors I talk to parang sinasabi nila na parang i-freeze muna natin to kasi maraming estudyante ay maiiwan if we proceed with online learning so what's your opinion on that actually uh Medyo sinagot ko na kanina yung ano no yung yung problema nga about the internet ah, said, Siguro yun na lang uh, freezing classes uh, this pandemic. Uh, freezing classes. Well actually nga uh, in, may ilang mga activities na may may mga ilang activities during this so-called mid-year term no June and July pero very very limited dito kasi
Uh, malala ngayon during the stay at home. Ano. So, uh, we continue to have psychological support activities and we would like to think na meron din mga, mga may magawa na semi-academic, for want of a better term. For example, mindfulness classes, no? teaching students how to meditate and all this na to control their anxieties. No? Uh, I'm very proud to say na on their own, maraming mga studyante din, thanks to the Student Council, tumutulong pa rin, pumapasok sila to help with mga um, pag-ano ng aid, no? kasi ang alumni natin napaka-generous ang daming mga donations, tinutulungan uh -huh. ang mga communities. And as you say there, uh, this is another learning opportunity na kita nila kung anong kalagayan ng mga tao. Dito. So I, I, I can say, hindi na akong chancellor, no? so I cannot make any promise, but... Uh, Actually, I used to say nga, kasi worried mga bagsa dyan, and ako, hindi na kayo chancellor, paano na sabi ko? Actually, <laughs> dahil hindi na ako chancellor, mas makakasalita ako. I will tell you that I speak up where necessary uh, if I feel that there are injustices here, including premature opening of classes. Okay. So, sir, you were saying na parang you were preparing students uh, dun sa transition to online by doing psychological classes, tama ba? And mindfulness activities, tama ba? Isa lang yan, ha? kasi I'm sure some people say, ang oh, um, dami na problema sa buhay, kasi tapos ipapameditate mo ako, bata. Pero alam mo, nakakatulong yan. You know? um, but more important is students know na may matawagan pa rin sila if they have problems. So, we stay, so we're on call for them. No? Okay. Uh, and then, sir, since the government task force has approved po yung resolution ng Commission on Higher Education, uh, to open mm -hmm. classes based on the mode of teaching, so given mm -hmm. that we be is considering the online platform for ano po, for delivery so mag open siya by august right so given na sabi niyo na inexamine niyo pa ino observe niyo pa yung preparedness or yung uh, yung preparedness ng students as well as ng teachers kasi actually even the teachers po nang problemado din sila when it comes to this setup kasi not mm -hmm. all merong laptop and yes. not oh. then my internet access. So I think it would be a big problem if we if we proceed with online learning. So are you saying mm -hmm. ba, na if ganito yung maging uh, observation yo is parang uh, uh, parang open po kayo or open yung university being an autonomous university in the Philippines na wag muna tayong sumunod with the DepEd uh, with the with the CHED guidelines like tayo yung magsaset ng sarili natin na uh, school guidelines tama ba? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, we we have to look for many different uh, platforms nga no nabanggit ko kanina nga na um, kung mahirapan tayo sa tinatawag na synchronous learning meaning magle-lecture dito tapos nakikinig ng estudyante because even that has to be reviewed no kasi yeah. iba kung sa Zoom ka eh, hindi pwedeng mag-lecture ng tatlong oras yung teacher na into Zoom no people will leave and all no? so we have to re-examine that baka mga iba dito will be asynchronous or even nabanggit ko kanina we will mail out services but but these have to go step by step at ang isang bagay dito napakahalaga no is ched and the government must provide more mm -hmm. resource okay. alam mo bawas pa nga ang budget dito sa education no at one time remember ang ang, ang plano ng budget and management was to remove the free tuition Ewan kong nabalita. Ayan, no? kasi daw kailangan para sa COVID. Huwag na huwag silang mag-sacrifice ng education budget. No? Give it to us so we can build up the necessary facilities for uh, online learning, no? step by step, including training of teachers. No? Ibang iba talaga ang platform dito. No? And if we need to push it further, then we will have to push it. But we also need the resources. No? Okay, sir. Thank you, Pop. Thank you. Thank you, Bons. Thank you, Bonds. And uh, for our last question, Lay Alvis of GMA is, will ask a question. Lay, do you want to ask it yourself? Good morning, Lay. sir. Apa. Mm -hmm. Sir, do you see inconsistencies dito sa um, MECQ? Like uh, people are encouraged to stay home as much as possible, pero bubuksan naman po yung mga malls. Okay. I, I'm not sure yet. Parang may qualification na bubuksan ng malls pero hindi hindi lahat na establishments, right? 
I forgot ano po, to qualify. Um, kasama na rin po yung mga fashion and accessories actually, sir. Uh, Doon sa mga papayagang magbukas. Good point nga yan. Natuwa nga ako na nagsara nga ang malls kaya hindi na ako kinukulit ng mga bat ang mga anak ko. No? You see, you survived two months without going to the malls. no? But uh, uh, I can see that to some extent nga na alam mo, <laughs> I'm sure tatakbo ang mga tao sa malls no? yung not necessarily to shop no? but also kasi parang narag na narag na ang mga tao na kukulong and they will want to go to the malls. I'm very ambivalent here. Sana man mga mall owners din should find ways na that the malls themselves will provide some kind of temporary relief for people. Lalo pa nung no, the last two weeks. Init, init. No, nakakaawang mga tao. But mm -hmm. I know they will also have rules na ilan ang pwedeng pumasok. No? May physical distancing and all. So maybe the malls will be shelters, but uh, I can see some of the contradictions here. Nga, na, kailangan mag, maging ingat nga ang mga nagpaplano. Dito like, nung na-lift yung, na yung quarantine sa mga ibang areas, Pinayagan, you might have heard about this, pinayagan ang beauty parlors, barbers, and spas. Mm -hmm. Pinayagan. Pero hindi pa pwede ang museums, no? which, siyempre kami mga academics, inuna na pang mga beauty na ano. No? And yet, I can also understand that some people feel din, ano, kung kailangan makabukas ng mga parlor, na hirap na hirap na sila. But it, it talks about our priorities, just like South Korea opening their bars, no? Sana naman maging mas ano tayo dito scientific na ano ang pwedeng magbukas. And maybe you have a point to pagbukas ng malls, mas mahirapan tayo sa uh, physical distancing. And the malls better, they better be prepared and that they will contribute. Otherwise, maging clusters of infections, sites of infections din itong mga malls. Dagsaan ang mayayari. Okay, thank you, sir. Sir, um, I wish stores were open. Yeah. I would like to see some hardwares open. Uh, <laughs> face it, no man. I, I don't know how many of you are missing the Korean stores. <laughs> Miniso, Mumuso, and whatever. They can be very therapeutic, but I know we will have to have physical distancing. At kawawa ang mga restaurants, malayo pa. They cannot have sit in uh, clients. Mm -hmm. Sir Mike, uh, we're st we I still have two more questions here that I want to ask. Are you okay if we can extend for just a few more minutes? Or, uh, mm -mm. Okay din okay. sa mga taga-Bidyan. Nako, okay po yan sa kanila. Um, so, Aiko Miguel uh, sent a message kasi kagabi and he asked, uh, yung season na, anong gagawin ng isang tao para makasigurado na hindi lang ubot si Po ng sakit niya sa likod ng banta ng COVID? Yeah, oo. Okay. Uh, good, good question. Nga, no? How do you differentiate? And I'm glad it was asked because uh, may mga ibang guidelines din dito, which I hope the OH can prepare. No? Kasi lumawak na rin yung, yung possible indicators of a COVID infection. No? Pwera pa sa ubo. Uh, I mean, things that look like na parang sipon din yan ano, na lagnat. No? But there are, there's a growing list now. No? For example, nawawalan yung uh, sense of taste and smell in a certain percentage. Ooh, mahalaga yan sa Pilipino, di ba? We smell everything, we want to taste everything. Pag nawala yan, that might be a sign of COVID. They have something called the COVID toe, toe sa paa, na muk, yung na, nangingitim, nagiging purple, no? usually associated yan sa frostbite, yung kung nakastock ka sa snow. And, ano. Pero kahit sa tropical countries, may lumilitaw, and that Apparently, it's another sign of COVID. Sa mga bata, there are signs of inflammation. So, uh, we will have to base it din sa mga reports natin at lahat yan ilalabas. No? And it shows also the importance na maging mas, mas matatag. No? Yung in, in, in the transition period, the OH has to look also. How do we strengthen the village health, barangay health workers? No? Kung paano sila... Kasi sila ang totoong frontliners eh, na pwede tayong tumakbos. Kanila, if they feel na uh, kailangan ipasok muna sa Kanlungang Palma or one of the quarantine centers habang hindi pa tayo sure. At saka dadami na rin ang test by then, we can test right away. No? 
but um, we will also need that referral, meaning sa level ng barangay to the hospital kung kailangan. Uh, reminder lang sa mga tao, about 80% of cases will be mild. Talagang mukhang sipon, mukhang trangkaso lang na pwedeng i-handle sa bahay. Pero mahalaga din, kailangan malaman natin, COVID ba ito or sipon lang? Kasi kung COVID, ibang-iba yan. Kaya yan sa bahay, pero naku, mahirap yan sa slum areas. Walang mga physical distancing. So, um, we all have to be prepared to be handling patients at home and to learn to tell the difference. Maybe one last example here is uh, uh, looking for signs of early respiratory distress, yung nahirapan na sila, lalo pa pa sa mga lolo at lola. No? So, there is uh, there are ways to look for that and may mga iba nga, may oximeter na ngayon to look at the oxygen levels sa pasyente. Pero ubos na rin eh, nag-check ako sa drugstore sa lahat. Masingit din dito, no? isa pa yan about the drugstore. Dami kong nakita sa mga drugstores na ubos ang mga multivitamin preparations. Nakang may listahan, no? Clusibol, Reticon, lahat ubos. No? Uh, at kung maliit ang drugstore, wala daw extra, hindi pa pumapasok ang replacement. Pero reminder lang, ang WHO is also saying, pwera pa sa vitamins, mahalaga din ang nutrition. No? And I know again, kasi walang trabaho ng mga tao, hindi sapat ang pagkain. Pero yung pera na ginagamit sa vitamins, baka mas maganda kung sa uh, sapat na pagkain nga, nutrition-wise. No? And then again, fresh air, sunlight, and exercise. Lalo pa po sa mga elderly. Uh, kung may dementia siya, mga Alzheimer's, lalong mag maging malalayan kung nakakulong lang sa bahay. No? That's why appeal ulit sa mga barangay chairman natin, sa barangay tanod, no? Uh, huwag namang lock-in. Yan ang appeal natin. Okay. Thank you, sir. And for our last question, Christine Sabilio from ABS-CBN online has a question. Dr. Tan, marami pong kumakalat ngayon yung mga peking produkto. Yung recently okay. nga yung lanyard daw na nakaka-prevent ng spread ng COVID na in fact, sinusunod ng ibang mm -hmm. health workers as parang pinapalabas ng mga online sellers sa sinusuot din ng mga government officials. Bakit mm -hmm. uh, hindi lang siya sa Pilipinas kasi sa US na ban na din siya. Pero bakit madaling okay. manoko yung mga tao tungkol dito? And ano yung pwedeng gawin natin culturally to mm -hmm. educate nga yung mga tao? Mm -hmm. Siyempre, an ano kasi no, yung napaka-mysterious itong sakit, it's a new disease. Um, Kaya naghahanap talaga ng mga tao ng explanations and we do not always have the explanations here. No? In fact, minsan contradictory pa. No? May isang YouTube na, I don't, I don't know if you saw it, I'll send it to DOH and have them send it to the to all the press corps and there's this woman. Ang ganda-ganda, kinumbay niya ang lahat na contradictory information dito. Na, uh, so so it's not just us, kahit sa Amerika nga. Eh, tingnan mo lang si Trump, di ba? At one time na inumin na lang disinfect. Ang grabe, no? Na, uh, it will always be there na kung araw-araw na lang may pumapasok na text, totoo ba ito, totoo ba yan, ano? It, it's hard to, ano, I think we will need, uh, ewan ko kung aware kayo sa press na may mga, may mga websites who specialize in fake news and urban myths. Again, I can send it to the Department of Health para pwede nyo i-check. Ang bilis ng response nila eh, tuwing may mga fake news, no? But we might need our own here as well. Ngayon ko lang narinig yung lanyard, no? And Rappler, I think, featured something na medyo gross talaga, no? I don't want to repeat it, pero yung galing nga sa lalaki daw na ano, yung galing sa lalaki, yan daw ang gamot, no? And uh, from a guy who claims to be a doctor. We will just need to be one step ahead na laging kung paglabas ng fake news, uh, sana pwedeng i-check ka agad, and then our media partners can help us to clarify na. So isa pang ano dito, ha? Medyo kumakalat yung... YouTube vid video na ang pangalan ay Plandemic. No? From the term itself, it implies daw na plano daw ito no? ng mga may yaman. Uh, and it is getting so many hits na ano, and nag-ano nag, na, nag-warning ng mga gobyerno na US and the others, but people continue to do that. So, this is where I think media need, we need to work together, no? tayo mga nasa media, na mag-refute ka agad. And then, to have good and accurate information in the DOH and other sites, no? na reliable na information. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you, Sir Mike. Uh, so we've, we've run out of time, uh, um, but we still have a lot of questions. But, uh, we will uh, we will prepare the list of questions for our 4 p.m. presser. Dr. Mike will be joining us this afternoon paren, to discuss how we can promote healthy behavior in this new life that we will be living, uh, mm -hmm. May 15 onwards. Mm -hmm. Um, so we thank our uh, media partners for your questions. Uh, Dr. Mike, if you'd like to provide a closing statement, and then we will see you later at 4 p.m. Okay. Salamat sa mga dumalo ngayon. No? I said, kayong mga media partners, uh, kasama ko rin sa media because I have that column in the Inquirer. No? I, I think, as maybe let me wear the media person hat, we really need to work harder to dispel not, not just the fake news, no, but also to work against the doom and gloom Soothsayers, no? Sobra na kasi nahihiya ako minsan mo kasi nga iba galing pa sa UP, no? Uh, enough of these doomsday figures, no? And remember, may nagpredict na 200,000 tayo ba, you know? Uh, it does not help to have number, throw numbers around, no? We need to get people, sana maging vigilant nga ang tao with facts, but we also need to let people know na, na may magagawa din tayo, no? When, Kasi kung la laging ganun ang lumalabas, maging hopeless din ang mga ano, dagdag pa ang pagmumura, pag pag pagsigaw ng uh, officials sa mga tao. Let's help people to understand uh, the situation better. Reminder lang constantly na 80% of the cases will be mild no, and moderate na hindi kailangan mag-hospital. At ang daming nag-recover na dito, no, those are signs of hope. Let's cover also the valiant uh Yung, yung ginagawa ng mga tao, mga, hindi lang mga doktor at nurse. Ano, importante sila, no? Alam mo, may namatay na rin na hospital drivers. We should be going after those stories, no? Yung mga dakilang, mga bayani talaga ito. No? Yung mga security guards natin, wala silang hazard pay. Pero tuloy pa rin sila, tumutulong din. Sa so, hospital, nagiging ano na rin sila, health orderlies, no? So let's spread the message. Uh, I'd like to urge you to cover sa Medical City. May um, disclosure of interest, uh, ako ay part ng board of directors, pero hindi ako shareholder, wala akong pera para sa ganun. I'm an independent director. No? Pero proud na proud ako sa Medical City, meron silang code hope. No? Iba may mga code red kung matindi na yung sitwasyon. Yung code hope is may gumaling na pasyente. Pag nangyari yan, nakahanda ang mga tao all the way up to discharge na pinak may palakpakan para sa ano yung, yung recovered patient. No? So let's create more hope for people. It should not be false hopes, but we need to create more hope. We need to help people to become kinder to each other. Grabe ang discrimination ngayon sa mga health workers. Kaya nagbukas din kami sa UP na yung dorms namin ay ginagamit na rin ng mga tagalang center. Kasi mga iba, wala silang makitang, pag sinabi nilang nurse sila, ayaw payagan na mag-rent ng kwarto. No? So let's let's convert our hindi na pwedeng pakanta-kanta na lang na ano no yung songs about bayanihan. Let's look at how we can all help here to make life easier for people uh, to convert this. It should not be a war on the poor, it should not be a war on the frontliners, no? Pagmamalasakit, yan ang panglaban natin sa COVID-19. Maraming salamat. Sir Mike, thank you for sharing such hopeful insights to our uh, media partners and we to communicate the same uh, to the public. So to our media partners, thank you. We will be seeing, for your additional questions, we will be see, we will be including it in our 4 p.m. presser. Sir Mike, maraming salamat po sa pagpapaunlak niyo po sa amin. We will see. Thank you po. Maraming salamat din. Thank you po. Magsa-sign out na ba ako? May tanong dito tungkol sa tuob ha, mami, ang suppressor. Pwede ko yan. Yes, sir. <laughs> sir, okay na po. Thank you. Okay, thank you as well. See you thank at you, four. No? Yes, pa. thank you, sir.